And if anybody is watching the video, you were making eye contact directly to the cam and you were literally targeting my soul. People's questions are gold. They are gold. I got numbers I'm trying to hit too, sis. I feel <laughs> you. What are some of the like, top three mindset shifts that people need to make to be ready to sell? <sighs> Only three? <laughs> oh, wait, you can give us more. I'm just... <laughs> give us as many as you got. Hey creators, it's your hosts, Natalie and Yasmin, and you're listening to the Course Creation Podcast. We'll talk business, building digital empires, and how to create passive income to start living a life you love. We are here to empower those of you who are thinking of starting your own course and to support those who are already well on their way to success. We've built a seven-figure media agency on unique storytelling, and now we're here to share our story in the course creation world, and more importantly, to hear yours. We are committed to creating a space for learning and a space for diversity and inclusion. Now let's get the show started. Three, two, one, action. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of the Course Creation Podcast. We are really excited to introduce our guest today, Macy McNeely from The Guide Culture, and chat all about her successful business and The Guide Method. We're going to chat about some important topics, including the importance of building self-confidence, having effective communication, the right mindset and attitude, and ultimately building skill sets and techniques for growth personally and professionally. Everything that the guide culture stands for. Okay, without further ado, Macy, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, I'm so thrilled to be here. I'm so excited. We're so thrilled to have you. So we, Yasmin always does this really beautiful intro off the top, but we still want to hear from you in your own words. Tell us a bit about yourself, what you do, and what you're up to these days. Oh, well, Yasmin did a great job. Uh, my name is Macy McNeely. I am local to Atlanta, Georgia, and I teach sales training. I am so passionate about understanding sales, sales skills, and honestly making it cool making it fun. I think a lot of people, and I would love to hear y'all's thoughts about sales, but a lot of people, they clam up when they think about sales. They feel a little sick. They're like, oh, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to knock on people's doors. I don't want to ask. I don't want to take money from people uh, when really it's just one of the most beautiful things you can do to really serve somebody and solve their problem. And, you know, it's just the coolest thing because like, it's all sales is is getting people into a decision that they make on their own so i know uh natalie you have kids yasmin do you have kids not yet not yet okay well natalie has a little toddler and i mean i know natalie you want your toddler to grow up and make decisions on their own right they they don't want they're not gonna have their mama following them forever saying hey uh, don't do that don't do that Uh, and so (laughs) that's right they're not absolutely and so all sales is is really kind of guiding people into a place where they're like hey, I choose that on my own. You're really helping them buy. You're not selling them, right? So you could say, hey, you better eat this broccoli. Or you could build the case and build the value of why eating healthy is so amazing. And then they choose to go eat healthy the rest of their life. Do you see the difference there? And, you know, I really got into just the love of sales, not on purpose. I mean, I didn't grow up as a little girl being like, I want to teach sales training. I don't know if anybody grows up thinking that. Uh, but my dad, actually, he has been so passionate about sales for about 30 years. He's an entrepreneur. And it's so funny. I I brought this. I knew we were filming today. Uh, My parents have been kind of like cleaning out their basement a lot. Um, And, you know, I, I, when I was younger, I loved to go to work with my dad, especially in the summers. I used to love to wear like nice outfits to go to the office. And I would like take notes in all the meetings and he would let me answer the phones. And uh, they found in the basement, one of the meeting notebooks that I would bring to the office. And it says July 2nd, 2004. And the, the title, is how to sell because he's been teaching how to sell since for 30 years this has been like his message of really making his office a sales cultured office and all that really means is like a results driven uh kind of culture and also he really wanted an office that every single person could handle an objection they could handle people's concerns they could get them into a decision whether you're a secretary or the ceo you know how to do this so this was the training that he's been building and teaching to everybody every year Year for 30 years. And when I w- first went into my entrepreneur journey, I was like, 
really wanting to do it on my own. You know, when you're young, you just, your, your parents aren't cool and you, you don't want anything to do with them. And I was convinced that what he knew, it didn't work anymore. You know, it's 20, whatever. It, it's not something that's going to work what used to work. And when my back was against the wall, you know, I had no sales. I was grinding. I was doing all the content. I was doing all the things I was posting on social media. I was like, just really trying to make this work. But at the end of the day, there was no money coming in. And so I finally went to him and I said, Hey, I'm ready to learn how to sell. I'm ready. And he's like, all right, you got to buy in. You can't question the process. You just got to do it. And so for about, about, I would say seven months, seven to nine months, I went into his office every day. And I learned a little technique and then I'd go and practice and I'd come back to him and we'd talk about it. We'd role play. We'd, we'd work through what could have done better. What I, you know, I'd practice on Instagram in real life on my emails. And then, um, you know, about nine months later, I looked up and everything had quadrupled my Instagram, my engagement, my sales, my business, everything. And so I went back to him and I said, Hey, people really need this. Uh, this is a missing piece. And he said, okay. Uh, and so I really kind of took the material uh, and packaged it as guide culture. And then my partner came in, her name is Catherine Schubert. And we're kind of like the marketing salespeople and Loy, my dad will come in and help teach uh, the training and support our students. That's amazing. Yeah. So Macy, when did, when did you guys establish the guide culture? Um, yeah. And how long did it take you to go through the back and forth with your dad until you felt like, okay, I'm ready and, and to package yeah. everything up essentially. Yeah. So we actually uh, started teaching it co- and we called it clearly confident because people were clearly confident after they took the training. Um, and, you know, we, we messed up, t- we talked about failures before we got on this uh, podcast, but we did not trademark anything. We just like called it clearly confident and just did what we knew to do we didn't know any better that name was taken and I was heartbroken you know just like devastated and now it's like the best thing that could have ever happened because then I kind of went back and you know the way we teach the method we start in the middle and then we work our way up and and we work we teach it a little bit differently uh because the method isn't necessarily fluid from top to bottom it's kind of it's like a dance you know you kind of go up and down a little um and I and I had this moment of like oh even though we teach it this way we teach starting in the middle we still need to present it from top to bottom. And when I realized we need to present it from top to bottom, I was like, oh, easy. This is an accurate, like it was so easy. It was so clear. And um, I had, I have this, this sentence in my head at all times. Uh, it's like tattooed in my brain of my dad over and over just saying, hey, we're not selling. We're guiding people into decisions. We're not selling. We're guiding people into decisions. And that word guiding, like it just kept popping up. And so I just got on the thesaurus and just found words that made sense with guide. And it's been, uh, I guess I say about, uh, about two years that it's been guide, uh, method. And really the method is actually only one pillar. There's four pillars. And so the culture is the three pillars and then the method is the one pillar. And, uh, yeah, it's been to answer your question. It took us about a year to organize the training. You can imagine, 30 years of notes, 30 years of Excel spreadsheets, 30 years of sticky. I mean, you can, you can't even picture what he had over 30 years. So it took us, it took me about nine nine months to really, uh, you have to imagine, I learned this with it scattered everywhere, right? So it took you about nine months to just like really master and be able to teach. And then it took us another year to be able to put it together. And then we started teaching it a little bit at a time. So we teach to a small group and we did it for about a month and then we would edit things. We would clean things up and then we would teach it live again. And then we'd edit things, we'd clean it up and then we'd teach it live again. And we taught it live. Um, We've been teaching it. We just stopped teaching it live. We've been teaching it live probably almost three times a month for the last like couple of years Um, because we started teaching it in person also. So we uh, teach it in person about once a quarter and then we teach it online once a month. And what's really powerful about guide culture is that the training is not like a self-paced. It's actually a, a where, 
you, you get a, you get a um, training and then we do a lab call. So you remember I would go to, uh, I would practice and I'd come back to my dad and say, Hey, like, let's role play. Let's talk about what just happened. And that was the most valuable part of being able to practice and get feedback. And so he was like, Hey, this is the most important thing that we create a space for people, people to be able to get role play. So it's been a lot of practicing trial error grinding for a long time. And we're just now starting to kind of work on uh, some potential new products. Quick comment. So lots there to unpack. We have a lot of follow-up questions. Um, Also very impressive that you did take that 30 years of knowledge and packaged it all up within a year. So this stuff does not happen overnight and a year is impressive. So that's a great timeline. I mean, it's like all I did for a year. So is it impressive? I don't know. (laughs) You live it, you breathe it, you're passionate about it. That's how we work as entrepreneurs. That's right. Um, As part of the story um, of a guide culture guide mm-hmm. method. I yeah. think it's just like really cool to break down the acronym and what it all stands sure. for. I'd love to hear that. And then we'll dive into our other questions. Sure. Sure. Okay. So first uh, G stands for get attention. You don't have anything. You can't, if you can't get someone's attention, it doesn't matter what you say, no one's going to hear it. And what's interesting about getting attention is that it's really all about the brain and understanding the brain. Uh, You know, there's something called the motivational triad, right? People really want things to be easy. They really want things to be pleasurable. Um, And they actually look for pain because they want, they want to see what to stay away from. And so really understanding what people are looking for, like that's why the news is so, is so addictive is because you're kind of seeing the pain so that you know what to not go into. Right. Uh, So understanding the motivational triad and understanding how to get quick attention and then also keeping attention is game changing you guys know for instagram for content and also just like your stories and your webinars and your conversations your discovery calls it's awesome uh U stands for unleashed curiosity, and we have four P's of curiosity. So we peak attention, we prospect, pre-qualify, and then proclaim. So get attention and unleashed curiosity is actually, we're still qualifying here. It's actually more like the marketing situation. We're trying to see if they're a good fit. We're seeing if there's somebody that would actually benefit from guide culture. And then once you know, then you go into that proclaim, which is the Uh, final uh, P of Unleashed Curiosity. Next, we have the I, uh, which stands for Increase Value. You remember I said we start in the middle when we teach. This is the workhorse. This is like the most important statement. It Like this is a statement you would send in a voice memo, like a 60 second voice memo to get someone to buy. I don't know if you guys do voice memos on Instagram. I live in voice memos. Uh, and I used to send like eight in a row, right? Because I wanted to prove, like I knew what I was talking about. Here's all my information that I know. When in reality, it was actually overwhelming people. And so that's where kind of this statement, we call it a five part wow statement that's really clear of what the value is of what you have to offer because remember at the end of the day people will sacrifice whatever it's worth they'll sacrifice money they'll sacrifice time they'll sacrifice energy if it's worth it so you have to build the value to show that it's worth it right d stands for dream big which is where you paint the vision of what will happen once they say yes to your product and the e stands for expand lives and i love that it stands for this because you know a lot of people call this the close, which is exactly what it is. You're asking for the decision. But what's really cool about when you really believe in what you do, you know, when someone says yes, of course, like your life as the entrepreneur, it expands. You're, you're, you're more confident. You have maybe a bigger bank account. You feel like you're respected more. You're trusted more. But really, at the end of the day, what I believe is that when someone says yes to guide culture, their life expands the most. And that's what I love celebrating is that they get to experience the gift of guide culture and what it does for them. And then we have handling doubts kind of on the side because handling doubts happen all the time, especially if you run your business on Instagram. Uh, You know, you might post some stories and then someone might send you a direct message that just says, hey, how much time does this take? which seems like a question, you would just like answer, oh, it takes this many hours or this much time, when really that's actually a concern. 
what they're really saying is like, hey, I don't know if I have enough time and I'm really worried that if I commit, I'm not going to be able to follow through. And so understanding how to handle that question as if it is an objection could save you a lot of time, a lot of energy and get you the sale much quicker. So how would you handle that question? Well, that's what we teach in guide culture. Oh, we have gotcha. <laughs> well, we have a four a four D formula. I'll tell you our four D formula. So you know, one of the things that people will ask is, okay, so they'll say, hey, how much time does this take? The first thing you want to do is say, well, why do you ask? Why do you ask how much time? You don't don't you ever assume that you know what people want, right? Uh, you can you want to you want to. Uh, come very curious. They might be saying, hey, I don't know if I, ha if I have enough time. Or they might be thinking, man, like COVID is happening. I'm at home. I want to make sure that I'm going to get my money's worth. I hope it's a lot more time than what, you know, it, it might be. So we want to, we want to know really the root of why someone is asking a question always. Guys, just the other day, my mom was asking, I had ordered a lamp for my house and she was asking um, how long the cord was. She's like, Macy, how long is the cord of that lamp? And I, I was kind of in a hurry and I wanted to just be like, hey mom, I think all cords are the same length, you know? <laughs> but really I just was like, hey, why do you ask? And she's like, oh, well, I want to put it on my table. I don't want a bunch of cord right here. I'm like, mom, the cord was going to fit perfectly right there, right? When you understand the root of why someone's asking, you can really answer in a way that's intentional, right? So first you want to do is you want to diffuse the concern. We have a very specific way of cushioning at Guide Culture to kind of diffuse. The last thing you want to do is be like, that's not true, right? Or like if someone's like, oh, I think that's expensive. No one wants to be told you're wrong. You know, no one wants to be told, no, that's not true. You want to diffuse. And then our second D is decide you're on the same team. I have seen way too often, way too often that sales is seen as like an opponent. Like, hey, I win when you buy. Oh my gosh. No, no, no. The goal is like for y'all to win together. The goal is for them to win, and when they win, you win. So making sure you are on their team and supporting them and really wanting for them as if you would want for yourself is critical. People can feel that from a million miles, miles away on Instagram. I really believe that. And then you want to determine what type of concern it is. That's our 3D. So there's lots of different, and also how to handle it. So there's a lot of different types of concerns. There's a genuine concern, which is like, hey, I'm like really worried that with my busy schedule, I can't fit it in. Very genuine. There's like a half thought out concern, or we call it sometimes like a half baked concern, which is basically like, hey, I um, heard online that online courses just aren't really uh, worth it like that's, they haven't done their research. They don't really know, which is actually very easy a, a concern to handle. It's really good news. There's hidden concerns. We want to make sure all the concerns are out in the open because any little concern that's not talked about could blow the sale, right? We want to make a, there's a bias concern. There's so many different types of concerns. And the thing is, is like when you understand the types of concerns, uh, it's kind of a gut decision. The more you're in it, the more you can tell, you're going to know exactly how to handle it. So we have four ways of handling it. Reverse, explain, admit, and deny. And then our last uh, D, our fourth D is to do. And we call kind of that uh, continuing to build the value. Remember I just said people buy what is more valuable than what it costs, right? So we continue to live in that space of building the value of what your product has to offer. Now, I want to be really clear here that, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes it's tempting. Like, let's say someone's like, hey, I'm looking at this course or this course. It's tempting to be like, oh, well, they don't have lab calls. They don't even coach you. They, they just like give you the stuff and tell you good luck. It's tempting to say, hey, they don't have this when really it's so much more powerful just to build the value of what you have to offer rather than showing what someone doesn't have to offer. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love everything that you just went through because I feel like, A, it makes total sense. Yeah. You know, and B, what I loved about how you answer that is instead of assuming what this person might have meaning for is that you actually respond to them with a question Always. and you can gather a lot more information that way. So, and yeah. I know, I feel like we're not built to respond in questions. I don't know what it is about oh. responding in questions that um, it's almost like we're giving away power, but we're not, we're actually gaining more power. So literally 
gain, you're gaining power because you can answer it so specifically. Yeah. And, you know, I think at the end of the day, it's just a lack of being genuinely curious. And they say, you know, curiosity killed the cat, but saved the salesperson, <laughs> you know? And when you're a true salesperson, you are so curious about people's problems, why they think the way they think, what they really want. You know, they think they want this, but they, what they really want is this. What do they need versus what they really want? It's like a constant thing that you're thinking about no matter who you talk to. Um, and so when you understand just the psychology of humans in general, you're able to be curious in a very specific way. And so when you ask, why do you ask, you know exactly how to handle it from then on out, which is like a, a massive tool that you can carry forever. Mm-hmm. 100%. Like a, such a higher engagement in terms of listening to as well, to whoever it is that you're speaking to, whether it's, you know, your target audience, whether it's someone that is a client already, whatever that is, it's just a, a much bigger platform for listening when you ask questions oh yes absolutely Mm -hmm. I love where we're at I love that we're like really getting down into the intricacies of sales but before we really dive in I kind of want to go back can you share with us some of the metrics of the guide culture I know that a lot of the people listening you know we get we buy in when we hear about somebody's successes so can you share with us the successes of guide culture Man, I don't even know where to start. There are so <laughs> That's a good many. thing. <laughs> you know, there's there's so many different wins. You know, there's obviously like, hey, the money wins. Then there's the culture wins. So I'll kind of touch on a couple. How about that? Yeah. There's a guy who is a farmer, actually, and he found us through his wife, which is so fun. And uh, he sells large farming equipment. And he has had this guy come in um, looking at this $36,000 piece of equipment for the last two weeks. He came like multiple times over the last two weeks. And he just like could not. And the fact that he's coming back is a huge buying signal, right? The fact that he's even engaging in conversation is like, hey, that's great news. Let's just tweak a couple of things to really get, get him into a decision, right? And after the first session, which is that workhorse that we just talked about, that that five-piece wild statement, after the first session, he went back with that new technique and he closed the $36,000 sale. And it's just so cool how it's like, it's really just understanding people, what people really kind of are saying without saying. You know, a lot of times people don't tell the truth right away, which is so normal. Like, there's a saying called buyers are liars, which it's not their fault. It's our duty to get to the root. So he was able to get to the root, get some agreements and get that $36,000 sale. And I'm just so proud of him. Every time I think of him, I beam with joy. <laughs> uh, and then we have another girl. Her name is Meredith. And she, I think I can, she, I can say this. She works at Corksicle. Do you guys know what Corksicle is? Yeah. It's like a, like a, like Hydro Flask. It's like mm-hmm. a, like a, Yeti type situation. Mm-hmm. Where, yeah. So she works on the design team at Corksicle. And uh, she came to Guide Culture in person in November. And what's really cool is she always talks about like how she has been working so hard, even though she didn't really know what she was working for yet. She knew she wanted to climb the ladder. She knew she wanted to be a leader. She wanted to be somebody that was kind of sought after on her team. And she has been, she's been a so bought in every time I get on a call her face is on every time you know we do a lot of calls around here right Mm -hmm. a lot of zoom calls her face is on the calls every time I'm she's one of our coaches every time I'm on a coaching call she's on that call and I just have noticed her really really taking ownership of this material and she kind of would say hey over time I noticed that my boss was coming like straight to me instead of my excuse me my boss's boss was coming straight to me instead of my boss I started to notice that happening I started to notice people were kind of recommending me more and then in co during covid this is super sad um everybody on her team was let go except for her wow. and people came her bo- boss's boss came to her and, and was like hey the leadership in you your ability to get your team on board your ability to communicate your ideas and the value of why your ideas matter has blown me away and there's no question that when this blows over you're going to be the person to take the team to the next level and to hear that story she's like macy i had no idea uh that like i said this is what i've been working for and i didn't even know it you know uh and you know it's funny because we've had a lot of covid stories actually a girl she's a marketing agency her name is emily and um she said that you know during covid a lot of her clients were like hey 
we are concerned about our budget, uh, but it is so clear, like you were so clear to us about the value that you can bring that there's no question that we're going to make room to keep you. Uh, and that's another incident where she was like, you know, I was having sales, you know, I was doing well, but I had no idea that this was going to take me through a pandemic that was going to not only keep me in business, but help me thrive in business. Amazing. It's so amazing to hear all of those success stories. And I think that a lot of, you know, the question that comes top to mind, because I can hear it in you, this is a proven system. This is something oh, yeah. that's helping work, like it's working for so many people. Um, is it the years of experience? Is that what makes guide culture so unique? What is it about your sales system that, you know, is su superior to others, if we want to say that? Yeah. You know, I think, there's so many things I believe so deeply in this training. I would, I would scream on the rooftop if I could about how this would help so many people. I think that it's been proven for so many years back in 2004, when I was taking notes, like <laughs> it was proven then just as much as it's proven. Now it's proven on Instagram. It's proven on webinars. It's proven in communication. Uh, and it's just a level of, of confidence that cannot be put on falsely. And what I think is really cool about guide culture is that, of course, there's the method. That's like, honestly, guys, if, I, if I'm being totally honest with you, that's about 10%. Like any technique, any method, I don't care what you do, is about 10%. It's important. If it was like a car, it'd be like the steering wheel, right? It directs you and it controls the car. It's very important, but it's definitely not the only thing that you need. The culture are other pillar, pillars, which are mindset and attitude, certainty in your beliefs, and then uh, likability and trustability. Those pillars right there are the meat. They are the meat and they are so looked over by most people and by most trainings. And I think it, it might feel fluffy. It might feel like, oh, I have a good attitude. Oh, I am liked and trusted. Oh, I do believe in what I do. Uh, but we actually find that people come in here and get the most out of the training by those pillars because they actually have not been questioned if they really believe it. They actually have some likability skills that could be fine-tuned, that they are skills that can be fine-tuned. And what happens when you master these pillars right here, we call it having uh, the belief of a lion. So if you go in a jungle, you're not questioning that the lion is the king, you know? He doesn't have to roar, he doesn't have to run, and he doesn't have to attack for you to say, hey, I respect that lion because he knows, he knows what's up, right? And that's what's really cool about being the lion in your industry. You don't have to roar on Instagram that you're the best. You don't have to flaunt all the stuff that you have, all the money that you make. You don't have to do all that, you just know. And it comes out in your voice, it comes out in your eyes, it comes out in your writing, it comes out in your DMs that cannot be faked. And when people start to develop that level of certainty and that confidence of a lion, people are like, they're coming to them being like, what the heck is different about you? What, I, I don't know what you have, but I want some of it. What does that look like to get some of it? And the, the, the piece of the pie is their product that they're selling. They're like, oh, you want some of this? Great, the best way to get to me is to buy this product. So I think that's the biggest thing is that we go deep, we're deep in the spirit, we're deep in the heart and the attitude and the mindset, which is uh, the most needle moving thing that you can work on. I really believe that. So let's, we're really getting into the meat of it now. So oh, I, how yeah. do we prove that it works? How do we yeah. prove that our, like, how, how do we, here's a great example. Let's talk specifically about Yasmin and I. So Perfect. you know, we're working um, on our video editing 101 course. We're towards the end of it. We've actually like, um, we're 90% done. Where Amazing. we're at right now is we're, we're in the final editing touches of the last two videos were actually our first two videos that are basically the, the sales videos, if we want to call it that. It's kind of like why you should take this course, why you should learn from us. Perfect. Um, so we haven't tested it. We haven't given it to anyone to try. We yeah. literally put a course together based on our experience of what someone needs to know in order to, to edit. Perfect. Uh, do we give this out for free and get no. feedback? No. Never give anything for free uh, because no one will actually do it if it's free. No one takes anything seriously when they get anything for free, right? Always always charge what what we did in guide culture which you're ahead of us than what we were in guide culture is we sold 
and created kind of as we went. So for example, I would put like a little piece together of guide culture. And I was like, hey, I'm gonna sell this portion of the course. I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna uh, test it on people. I'm gonna basically make sure they get results. I'm gonna be on their butts and make sure like I was following up with them like crazy. Guys, there were, there were nights I'd be on a lab call for like three and a half hours straight just to make sure people would understand it. And the fact that the lab call was three and a half hours is a massive problem, which means my teaching was not clear. So I was like, okay, what's the missing piece? Let me go back and dive in and see what, what needs to be changed. And then I would do it again. I would teach a little bit. I would see what was going on. We'd do our lab call. Okay, got a little bit better. It got a little bit better. And like I said, we, for about two years, we taught about three times a month. We taught online, in person, and we were hired by companies to go in and teach once a month. And so just the repetition and just getting the results from people is like proof that it works, right? But obviously when you first charge, it's very, very low. You charge a very small amount. You maybe have 10 people and you make sure they go through it from top to bottom. You give them homework. You make sure they have results. You get some testimonials and then you charge a little bit more next time and you make sure and if they're struggling they're like hey this does not make sense I've tried to do I've tried to upload here I've tried to do what you say and I'm struggling well then that's your fault that's not their fault right so you need to go in and you need to go figure out what the heck is wrong fix it and then do it again it's so much editing we still this is my workbook right here our guide culture workbook I keep it right here all day every day and I'm going through and I'm editing stuff to this day of just like, hey, what can be better? What can be changed? And we're, we're always editing. So that's how you just prove that it works. I think one of the, the biggest, the biggest misconception is that like a, a course, you press the green button and then you walk away from it and you never touch it again. And you can absolutely do that, but you're gonna lose trust from people very, very quickly. Because if you stay at, like guys, video editing, it changes all the time, I feel mm -hmm. like. There's always a new thing to do. There's always a new something that you can add. Um, and so keeping it updated, staying in your community and really creating community is just going to set you up for success for down the line. That's amazing. And Macy, talking about community, when you mm -hmm. first had that initial program that you mm -hmm. set out to test, did you reach out to people in your existing community to review that? Was it like peers that you knew? Or at what point did you expand it and then start building a new network and a new community? Yeah, well, I, I didn't really ask people to test. I sold it, which that's right. why sales skills are so amazing is that you can sell anything, whether it's like what you don't want to do, major key. What you don't want to do is get on Instagram and be like, hey, guys, I'm just testing this out. I just want to see, will anybody like buy this, right? You're coming on, you're like, this is the best dang thing that's ever been since sliced bread. I can't wait for you to try this. I'm so excited. Here's, I'm only taking this many people. Like build the value of it. Don't go into it like, oh, I'm just testing it. Mm -hmm. um, so I luckily, which was so awesome, I started as an entrepreneur in uh, wellness. So I had built a little bit of a community and I built a little bit of a network. I mean, I probably had 2,000 Instagram followers though. It was not anything to write home about. And this is another thing that I see as like a big possible misconception is that, um, and so I just sold to my audience. I had built trust. I'd showed up on stories. I was adding value all the time outside of wellness, outside of health. I really was like focusing on mindset a lot, honestly, but so many people are like, Hey, I need to build my audience before I sell anything. And I, I get that logic because you're like, hey, I need to get in front of people to be able to sell. It makes so much sense. What's actually more valuable is to be able to convert who you already have. Convert If you can't convert who you have now, there's a pretty big chance you're going to struggle to convert a bigger audience later. And even more scary is that you show up in a way that isn't really, you know, what well, I really believe we have some really kind of guide culture guidelines and and without showing up in a specific way you could lose trust very easily you could you could lose some credibility very easily and we talk all about that in guide culture and when you lose trust like you it is very hard to get back right so building these skills first 
will naturally build your audience, but also you'll be ready for when the audience does come. Does that make sense? <clears throat> Absolutely. And thanks for correcting me <clears throat> on the testing. You don't yeah, test. Yeah, not testing. <laughs> you we're, can we're sell. We're selling. <laughs> Absolutely. We're always <laughs> selling, okay? Life is sales. Amazing. Yeah. So the importance of an email list, let's talk about yeah. that for a second, because you did say that you sort of had, <laughs> you know, an initial list or sorry, about 2000 followers from your mm-hmm. previous business. And yeah. that's very similar <clears throat> to uh, the situation that we're in. And I'm sure a lot of our listeners are in the same boat as well, where you're sort of pivoting your business and you might have what I like to call like another life. Like in a previous life, you know, a lot of the people that yes. we used to hang out with are uh-huh corporate you know they're vps they're like ceos they're like they wouldn't necessarily be interested in the product that you're now selling is that like a abandon ship and move on or do we still you know you know that's a really good question i did go through a season of, of what i would call like audience turnover a little bit some people stayed some people didn't totally cool either way right What I think is interesting is that really at the end of the day, people are are really buying you more than anything, more than anything. And that's what's valuable as a personal brand is that when people trust you, they really buy you more than even what you're selling. And um, so I I feel like, you know, there's some, there's a girl that messaged me the other day for the first time ever. She's like, I've been watching you for two years, like since before guide culture, before uh, sorry, it was even longer than that then. She was basically like, hey, I've been, I've been with you since before Guide Culture and Clearly Confident. I'm ready to, to move to, to buy Guide Culture. But it took so much time of nurturing. It took so much time of really like changing her mentality. A lot of my Instagram is kind of, um, I would say, a little bit more of like, hey, this sales isn't what you think it is. Here's what it is. And so over, and I knew that that needed to happen because I was changing my audience, right? People weren't coming in like, oh, I'm, I'm fired up about sales. They were coming in, they were already there and they're probably like, ew, sales, like I'm going to go throw up. It's the last thing I want to do. Um, so I don't think it's a, it's an abandoned ship at all. I think you create content based on what your audience wants. And what's really amazing about guide culture is that like when you create value, you're actually selling at the same time. I see a lot of times people are like, oh, give value on this day, sell on this day, like on a launch, for example, when really like you, I do both at the same time every single day. There's not a day I'm not selling on Instagram, you know, but it's, it's a way that people don't feel like it uh, because you're adding value to people's lives. So if you focus on adding value to people and serving people, that's what they're going to feel with like guide culture in the background. Right. But it's always kind of there. It's that omnipresence of like, Oh, this might be something that I need. I'm not sure, but I'm going to stick around because Macy is more valuable than just selling guide culture. Right. I think that's what's so, you know, challenging when it comes to the world of course creation and I think I was kind of trying to hit on that earlier today when when we were talking about automation yeah is that when I think about selling our course specifically I'm like okay so are we sending are we setting up a landing page and then there's going to be an email that goes to our contact and then wait is there a lead magnet or do we put ads behind it it's just like how do we possibly get this in front of people and then you get lost in this like rabbit hole of all of these things that you should be doing and it's incredibly yes. overwhelming. Okay, don't do any of that yet. <laughs> Just pro- prove that it works. Sell it to five people. Sell it to five people. Prove that it works. Then sell it to 10. Prove that it works. And when you know, you're like, dang, this is something people can't live without, then go ham. Go ham on the on the lead magnet. We just got a lead magnet. We just started doing ads. We just now are dabbling in all the things that all the people tell you to do. Uh, but, and the reason I tell you to wait, um, Natalie, is because the more you serve people, the more you know who you're serving, which means your messaging in all of those things are going to be way more clear. They're going to be way more crisp. It, you're basically going to be able to walk around what I like to call like a missing person. You're like, hey, this is who I'm looking for. Have you seen them? And it's your ideal client. Like you can describe Mm -hmm. them so well. And being able to basically hold up a missing person sheet on your, you know, meta, so to speak, on your landing page is going to be game changing. But you can't do that unless you know who you're serving like backwards and forwards. 
Thank and you. That's you, so valuable. I think yeah, everything the, you just and the way you is know so is, is yeah. just getting experience with specific yeah. people. You know, yeah. it's the only way you can know. So start slow. I know you want like the yeah. biggest bang. <laughs> like same. I got numbers. I'm trying to hit too, sis. I feel <laughs> you. I feel you so much. You are gonna save so much time, energy, and money by just buckling down for like like six months and just making it perfect, as perfect as you possibly can, and then go. Like just go do all the things that you're being told to do. Love that. Love that. Yeah. Okay, so that's our problem to solve. But let's talk about the person who is starting out. They've probably figured out their zone of genius, but mm-hmm. they haven't constructed their course yet, or maybe they shouldn't be constructing their course yet. Yeah. Where is a good place for them to start? They know their zone of genius. Mm-hmm. And they're wanting to make a course, correct? Yes, correct. Um, well, I'm really proud of them, first of all, for knowing their zone of genius first. Sometimes I see people kind of go into this field and they're like, I want to be a course creator, which I get because like it's such a low overhead. It's you can automate so much. Like it sounds like a dream business, right? It does. <laughs> it sounds like amazing. And it is. It is so amazing. But I wouldn't even consider myself a course cre- in the course creation industry. I would say I'm in the sales industry, the sales training industry that happens to deliver it, a portion of it online. That's how like I consider myself. And I think that that's like the best way to go into course creation is like, this is my, my zone of genius. Video is my zone of genius. I'm just going to happen to teach it online. And when you think about it like that, and you think about like really serving people more than, hey, let me create a course to make money online. I'm telling you, that shows through subconsciously. I can't even tell you how loud it is and people don't even realize it. And, you know, making money, whether you're online or in your brick and mortar, wherever, it's a cause and effect, right? You serve people, you make money. You serve people, you make money. So many times people are focusing on the effect without the cause, Mm-hmm. And you cannot have an effect without a cause. You got to have a cause before the effect. And so when you have this service mentality of like, hey, how can I go help people? You're going to go be very curious about them. You're going to go learn about them. You're going to go be a student of them and seeing what they need. I, even, even Instagram podcast content, I never create anything until I know, I ask them. I'm like, hey, what, what is important to you? What do you need? And being the salesperson, I can hear if they're like, like, hey, I'm just trying to like automate things, for example, I might be able to ask more questions and get to the root, which is like, hey, I'm just struggling with time management, right? Which I can totally create content on time management, scheduling in your life, you know, you see how that works. But really the first thing is to go learn about people, to go study people and to go see what they, at your audience, your community actually wants. Because if you're creating something they don't want, that's a sad day for you. You're doing a lot of effort that you don't even know if it's worth anything, right? So go and learn about people. And I call, I call it co-creating, like create alongside of them, create a little piece, deliver it, see what the situation is, see what they liked. People love being a part of a process. They really, really do. You are charging though. Let's not forget about that. And, and see the questions that they ask. People's questions are gold. They are gold. They are everything. So seeing what they ask and start creating a list of the questions that people ask. And when you come with that mentality of like, hey, I'm really helping people solve a problem, the money is going to come. So really working on that mindset, working on that heart set, growing your trust, likability skills, learning how to sell and going to learn about people and being curious about your community. It's the first thing I would say. Love that. Love that. I also think mindset is such a huge part of selling oh my gosh and I know even for us there's so many things that we've had to like overcome and have like a a huge mental shift about what are some of like top three mindset shifts that people need to make to be ready to sell Uh, only three (laughs) oh wait you can give us more (laughs) give us as many as you got okay uh my first one is like i feel like this is cheesy but it's it's just not selling is serving we are serving people money is simply a certificate of appreciation that's all it is we're just appreciating the the service that you're you're giving and the problem that you're solving um i think another one would be 
be um, the heart, heart, what I call the heart. Heart work is the hard work. And it is the foundational work. So when I'm talking about the heart work, I'm talking about the things that that never change. So the things that never change are um, are like humans, really. Like the human race is pretty predictable. Any one person is unpredictable, right? But typically it's pretty predictable. I'm a believer, so Jesus never changes. And then the third one is kind of like the laws of nature. So like cause and effect, uh, momentum, getting momentum, understanding those laws of nature. And that right there is the foundation, like understanding people, having that, we, the spirit, Jesus is totally in guide culture. And then also just understanding like nature's, nature's law and how it applies to business is game changing. And the way I think about this is like the foundational work. Okay. If you think about someone digging a foundation for a big building, they are under ground. Like you might drive by and you see a ton of cars and a ton of machinery, but you can't see people doing the hard work. No one is standing watching these foundation workers being like, I am so proud of you. Keep going. You're doing a great, like nobody cares about the foundation work. What they care about is the tall building, right? They care about the beautiful building when it's beautifully decorated and they can take their pictures and it's air conditioned, but no one is praising the foundation work. And ain't nobody cares about it until that building falls, right? When the building falls, they're like, who built this foundation? But it is the most powerful work that you can do. And the best way, we have like three forms of personal development. It's like product knowledge slash mindset kind of situation. Uh, Scripture is another huge one for me, a personal development. And then also communication skills. Those are the three things that never change. And growing those foundational skills, it is the most important thing because the technology is going to change. The systems are going to change. The new and greatest thing is going to change. But focusing on the things that don't change will change your life. I believe that so, so deeply. And then uh, your mindset is also uh, communication is king. That would be the third thing. You know, Warren Buffett says the surefire way to double your net worth is to hone in on your communication. And, you know, people feel like they're online all the time. All they got to do is write. They just send emails when really it is it is the the one thing that will determine how well you do is the mouth, what comes out of your mouth, whether it's through your fingers or through your Instagram stories. So really buying into the power of communication is huge. Love that. And that kind of leads me to my next question. So you know where the video girls or the video girls. I gals. love it. <laughs> I don't even know. I made that up. Video queens. <laughs> video queens. Yes. Video is so important. Y'all, if you're not using video – these girls can help you and you just answered it (laughs) well I was I was kind of getting to you know a lot of the online courses the course creation world I mean people really focus on ad copy and we can say ad copy we can say copy in video whatever that is how important do you think it is to really like get on camera and speak directly to your audience it is the most important it is the most important just like I said people buy people They really aren't buying product. I really believe that. And uh, you're in the people business first and foremost. You're not in the course creation business. You're not in the insurance business. You're in the people business. And the way you connect with people is with your eyes, with your smile, with your tone. You know, your tone is like, it's 31% more uh, like louder in communication than the words that you say so you can type all day long but that tone is critical and you cannot show your tone unless you're on video and using that smile making that eye contact even though you feel like you're not making eye contact you really really are uh it's it is so important we have a whole studio like you don't even know how much money we spent on our studio on video but we just know the power of it how important it is so yeah get on video And you're all about creating magnetic messages, which is exactly in line with how you present yourself and the connection that you make with people. So everything is aligned. It's aligned. (laughs) 
That's what and I can want. see it. You are totally <laughs> magnetic. Like I'm just like feeding into your energy, whatever you're giving. Oh, amazing. You guys are so sweet. Yeah. And another, you're an amazing storyteller. I mean, in this yeah. entire conversation, what's really important and what we try to emphasize and what we try to really practice too in all of our communication is tying in stories because people resonate with that. The more stories you share, there's a, we always say there's a power in sharing, but yes. it's just a great way to connect with people. Oh yeah. Stories sell a hundred percent. Um, and that's, what's so cool about video is that you can, there are endless amount of ways to tell a story on video. There really are between different editing and you can show things. You can, you know, huge part of sales is demonstrating and really showing rather than telling. And I don't know another way to show anything, but on video. Right. And so you, the way you can show a story without even really telling it, I think is even more impactful than saying the words. All right. Well, it was such a pleasure having you and we're nearing the end of our time together. But before we say bye, Mm -hmm. there's one last question we always ask every one of our experts. Okay. And that is, if you could leave us with one last wisdom bomb, what would it be? (laughs) Do less and obsess. It feels so right to have so many things going on. It feels like you're so productive. It feels like you're moving the needle when really you're just spreading your attention. I have learned this such the hard way. And I've also learned that choosing priorities is not enough. It's just half of it. Truly being obsessed with the small priorities is absolutely key. It's going to take you so much further, so much faster. Uh, You know, we love options. We cling to options. We want to have all the opportunities. Uh, when really it just makes you make more decisions and then you are decision fatigued and you're tired when you don't even have the chance to make a decision uh, and you just already know what you're doing and what you're moving towards, it's going to really help. I mean, my best example I could give to you is in course creation, truly. Uh, In our students, you know, I see a lot of times they create something. Here, here's here. I'm going off now real quick. No, no, no. We love it. Here's what, um, (laughs) what happens is, you know, let's say you, you launch a new course. It's a brand new spanking new, right? And it's so exciting because your audience has never seen it, seen it before, right? They're like, oh my gosh, it's so fun. It does so well, especially if you're used to making courses and people really trust you and you've delivered a bunch and it's so exciting and you get this high. We call it, it's kind of like a hit, you know, we're always saying like, say no to drugs, even though it feels really exciting to do like discounts and to create new products and you get such a rush, but really it hurts you in the long run because then your audience expects things. Anyway, what I see so many times is that people get this rush, they get so excited and so they just move on to create the next and they move on to create the next and they move on to create the next. And they're really just watering down everything that they've taught because it's like, hey, what do you even like, what, do you, what is even your expertise, right? And so get like doing less and obsessing over one product for a long time and master, you can't master anything until you repeat it and just really kind of get away from thinking about, hey, how can I press the green button and walk away and really start thinking more about like, hey, how can I really serve people, help people and help them win? Because when they win, you win big time. That is the correlation. When your students win, when your clients win, you win. And so doing less and obsessing over one product for a very long time and perfecting it and being known for it is going to take you so much further and you're going to have way more longevity in your business rather than than creating a new thing every every couple of months. Amazing. And if anybody is watching the video, you're making eye contact directly to the cam (laughs) and you were literally targeting my soul. So I love that so much. And it means so much to hear those words because as entrepreneurs, we're passionate people. We are trying to run a mile a minute and there's so much going on. And so at the end of the day, yeah, we're successful. We're doing a lot. It's awesome. You know, productivity is amazing. But what are we really achieving if we're not obsessing, if we're not focused, if we don't do one thing right before we move on to the next, what is the point? So that yes. was amazing. And it's so good to have a partner like you two that you can check yourselves. We we call it shock collaring over here. You know, especially Catherine and I, we're both like visionaries, want to go into the next, into the next. We have our team that are like, hey, I love you, but I'm going to shock collar you and slow you down because we're not obsessing enough on this thing. So having you two together to be able to really 
like I said, check yourself is a huge deal. Oh, so, that actually reminds me. I wanted to ask you yeah. a few questions about you and your sure. partner. Just sure. because Yasmin and I have been partners for 10 years. And, you know, we've had our moments where, you know, it's definitely highs where, like, everybody's living at their 10. You know, Yasmin is has got her powerful, you know, section and I've got my powerful section sometimes we're overlapping how do you guys like deal with that like especially when it comes to a making sales or putting out content is it do you sort of know when someone has more of like um strengths in one area or another or do you guys sort of like divide and conquer Mm -hmm. how do you guys deal with that it's a great question you know we're definitely still trying to figure it out I can't imagine how people with 10 years experience working together I bet you guys live in each other's brains you like no <laughs> we do we actually live together too we were roommates oh my for a gosh while. yeah so we have a fun right story now, about that with the we have not even talked yeah <laughs> oh my gosh y'all need to do a podcast on that alone that is so valuable I would love to learn what y'all do um but you know like Catherine I call her the curious cat because she really is super curious so she's really good at like and also you know I kind of started this with my dad and a lot of times when you're so in it it's hard to see from the outside and so when she came in she's she's like the cool aunt and I'm like the mom you know so she's able to think a little bit differently see things differently she was a student at the beginning she was a coach so she has experienced so many different things Um, so like usually when we're on a podcast and we tell a guide culture story, she tells it because it's just like, I'm just like too personal in it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. She can tell it from an outside perspective. So she's really good at like, um, ICA stuff, which is ideal client avatar going and asking our community what they need. Um, she's so good at information gathering and her writing is incredible. Like she's one of the best writers I think I have ever seen. Truly. She's incredible. Uh, she's an amazing teacher too. We really, we really go back and forth. We have to uh, not be together that much because we get too creative. So we have like our creative days and then we have almost a week to execute based on one creative day. Mm. And then one thing just to like check our hearts together. And I do this with everyone on my team. Every other month we have a one-on-one is what I call it. And we all come. So I come and they come with the answer to these three questions. What do you want me to stop doing? What do you want me to start doing? And what do you want me to keep doing? So they will tell me what they want me to start, stop, and keep doing. And I will tell them what I want them to stop, start, and keep doing. And it can be super uncomfortable. It's like a time for feedback. Uh, but it is one of the most um, just like culture building uh kind of schedule meeting that we have and it's just a place where you can be super open super vulnerable you don't have to no one's ever going to get in trouble for anything and we uh really just talk about what's going on in our heart so Kat and I do that has been huge for us very love cool that. I love that yeah. and everything that you said about your dynamic with with Kat it's so funny it's so similar so with Nat and I there's like so much overlap yeah. so it's yeah. really cool to hear and that are your husband's friends yeah <laughs> Well, they're friends, but, but the thing is, is that because we're in separate countries, mm-hmm. I'm from Canada as well. Right. But now that I live in the States that I've been here for four years, oh, wow. so they haven't had a chance to connect as much. Yeah. Um, and they're both uh, frontline workers. So they're like oh, doing wow. shift work and they're busy. So Bless they, their hearts. yeah. So when on their time off, they're not interested in being on FaceTime, unfortunately. Totally. Totally. <laughs> I know what's funny is like. Um, if, if we're like Catherine and I, if we're talking on speakerphone or FaceTime and our husbands are in the room, like, and something's wrong or we're not feeling good, like his, her husband will give me a pep talk. My husband will come and give her a pep talk. Like we're all so in it together, the four of us. So it's been a really fun journey. And, you know, we have like a, we're, we have the same exact birthday, same year, wow. same exact anniversary, same year. Wow, Our social God. security numbers are like one apart. Oh my we gosh. We open the same time. I mean, there's so many things. It's like God knew, like mm-hmm. if this was not an accident. Um, so it's, I'm telling you, it's better together. Y'all know that. It is yeah. better together. If you are alone in business, you don't have to be. Get a partner. It's so much better. A hundred percent. Definitely. Yeah better That's together amazing. and y'all are proven to work well together 10 years that's incredible yeah all right well you are just a wealth of wisdom and so oh, magnetic God. I have to use that word yeah <laughs> I just love listening to you talk um but 
we've come to the end of our podcast. And so where can people find you if they want to continue to listen to you talk? Yes, <laughs> uh, we talk a lot around here. Uh, you can come to The Guide to Culture on Instagram. Also, I have my personal Instagram. You're welcome to follow me there, Macy McNeely. And then I would love to give your people a free resource. It's oh, yeah. uh, more sales, better clients, and faster results. It has our method totally laid out from top to bottom. Uh, people can read that and get some really, really quick wins. So I'll send you a link to that to put in your show notes. Amazing. Awesome. Thank, Thank you so you. much. We're so excited. It's been Yay. such a pleasure. That's a wrap on another episode of the Course Creation Podcast. Thank you for tuning in and being a champion of ours. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit subscribe and find us on Apple Podcasts to leave us a review. We really want to hear from you. And we're going to be digging through reviews for our next guest to feature. So if you're interested in being a guest, then you know what to do. Also join our private Facebook community called the Course Creation Crew to connect with other course creators. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at coursecreation.com. That is all. We appreciate you all so much and look forward to having you here next time.